Brand new release from Prada, Luna Rossa Ocean EDP. The EDT was quite nice, but didn't float my boat. Can this one cook up a storm? Let's dive in. I didn't buy the EDT, it was nice, but nothing that new, so I didn't end up buying it. But I was browsing in John Lewis looking for a completely different fragrance, and I saw that they were selling the new Luna Rossa Ocean EDP. So I decided to take a punt on this, buy it without smelling it. Is this blind by regret or a summer must have? The brand say, opening with an invigorating burst of grapefruit essence, contrasted with the woody vibrancy of incense and a rich vanilla bean accord. A composition augmented by the cutting edge molecule of amber extreme, boosting the ingredients intensity and diffusing a powerful trail. I'm gonna get this out of the way before I go any further because I think it's quite an important point. This is not the smell I was expecting from a fragrance called Ocean. I thought we might have a little bit of marine saltiness, maybe a hint of seaweed, even a, a chunk of driftwood floating around in there, but nope, none of that. Even Jake Gyllenhaal, who is the face of this fragrance, looks a little confused by the name of it. Incidentally, I need to show you a little clip of a behind the scenes interview with Jake because man, he's killing it. He's giving me a run for my money here with this fragrance reviewing thing. Honestly, he really nails the scent without any hint of shilling whatsoever. The smell is fresh, you know, it has a, a real sense of almost like that ocean water. When you dive into the ocean, when you're actually in it, you wash off all the things of the past and you're sort of almost reborn. That from Jake Schillenhall, reborn. Why didn't I think of that? Genius. I guess there are two types of oceanic fragrances. Those that smell a bit like the ocean and those that don't. You could argue that those that don't are evoking the feeling of the ocean in a more metaphorical way. Kind of like bloody Chanel. Okay, I guess I can buy that, that it's more an evocation of the ocean rather than anything literal. And at least Prada don't bang on about how you're taking a plunge into the deep ocean and seducing hot mermaids or anything like that. So the best thing to do is forget the name, forget anything to do with oceans, reset any preconceptions and come at this with an open mind. And if you do, I think you'll like it because I do. It opens with a fruity powdery almond and then straight from the get-go there's lots of depth with this fragrance like the deep sea. Maybe that depth is coming from incense and the woods and even though I'm getting a bit of almondy something or other going on in this it's not a listed note so whether that is a phantom note that I'm picking up I don't know but I am getting a little bit of that. This bright, sweet, fruity opening is not overly dominated by citrus, as you might think from an oceanic fresh scent. That works for me because fragrances that are really front loaded with super realistic citrus kind of makes me feel like I, I just smell like a, a grapefruit when I spray it on. I don't just want to smell like a grapefruit. I want to smell like a man. I want to smell like a man who smells of a smooth blend of fresh, clean and sexy. Opening is very nice really pops off my skin in a very satisfying way. After about 30 minutes, this bright fruitiness rounds off and you're left with a slightly fruity sweetness which seems to blend really smoothly into the incense and woods. It's not super incense -y, though. I'm only saying incense because I guess I've seen it in the note breakdown. If I hadn't read that note breakdown, I'm gonna be honest with you, I don't know if I would have particularly picked out incense, but there is a lot of depth here, like a good, amount of depth like a deep ocean. So I'm attributing some of that depth to the incense but I don't smell this and go whoa this is a, a big old incense bomb. What there is a bomb of here though is vanilla, a lot of vanilla. This to me smells like a sweet creamy vanilla gelato so it smells nice. I am a little surprised how heavily this leans into the vanilla with it being an ocean fragrance but we did talk about pushing away those ocean associations but honestly I'm struggling a little bit and I've got this imagery popped into my mind you are in the sunshine you're queuing at an ice cream van go with me here you are buying a vanilla ice cream probably a Mr Whippy in a cone and you're obviously by the ocean the person next in line is buying a grapefruit ice lolly and as you're licking your vanilla ice cream you're getting whiffs of the grapefruit lolly. Throw into that a little bit of almondy powderiness and some amber extreme and uh, that's that's kind of what you're getting with this. After a few hours 
of wearing this, maybe three to four hours, it becomes a woody vanilla fragrance and goes quite close to the skin. At this stage, not massive amount of projection, but it is still a nice smell. It's, it's a woody vanilla fragrance. You do lose that juicy fruitiness of the opening, but the dry down is, is still pretty pleasant. Opening is bright, juicy, poppy, absolutely fantastic. The mid is great because you're still getting a little bit of the fruitiness with the woods and the vanilla and the incense. And then in the far dry down, it is that skin scent woody vanilla. Overall, very likeable, very mass appealing scent that I think is done really well. And even though it's got a big dose of creamy vanilla in here, I still think it would work pretty well in the summer because it does have the freshness, particularly in the opening and the mid. All these things combined, I would say this fragrance has definitely got a year round versatility. Performance, I've been pretty impressed with this. It projects nicely for four to five hours. And then after that, it just starts to dry down into that woody vanilla skin scent, although it is still wafting off a little bit. So overall, I think performance of this is pretty decent. It's obviously a fragrance aimed at men, but it's not super masculine. So I think any gender could wear this fragrance and also any age, old or young alike. It's the kind of fragrance you could wear for any occasion. Honestly, I couldn't pigeonhole this into one specific occasion. And just to give you an idea of the profile of this scent, what it smells like if you haven't smelled it. And this might just be me, but when I smelled it, it reminded me of something else. There is this familiarity, I would say a comforting familiarity. It reminded me a little bit of Armani Code. And I didn't know which Armani Code, just sort of that DNA in general. So I smelled my Armani Codes. And to me, in terms of smell, it's probably closest to the most recent Armani Code Parfum. Again, not exactly the same, but that kind of vibe. It's definitely got a little bit of code going on in there. Presentation is awesome. I love these Prada bottles. It's the usual Luna Rossa bottle design in a nice deep blue color. Strangely, this isn't yet available on Prada's website in the UK. It says available soon, although it is available in pretty much every other UK store, just not Prada. Overall, very solid scent. I've really enjoyed this. Not a game changer, but then not every good fragrance has to be. It's comfortably familiar, very easy to wear, very likable, very mass appealing. And I'm gonna say that this could be a bit of a compliment getter. If you like this video, if you found it useful, you know what to do, give it a like, subscribe if you haven't already. Have you tried this? If so, did you feel reborn like Jake when you wore this? If you did, once you've learned how to type again, please let me know what you thought of it in the comments. Did you? like this as much as Jake because he really liked it. Okay, that's it from me. Thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next video. Bye.